Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I want to get started on my big horizontal do-all bandsaw. Similar to the little Harbor Freight unit here, except it's like 20 times the size and weight. And the one that I have, a lot of you guys know, was completely an automated saw, bar feeder and everything. And I'm stripping it down and making it into a completely manual unit. Something I can use in the shop that doesn't take up the entire shop. But the problem is that the vise on it is all manual, the speed control, you name it, or automatic. It's all automatic. It has to be converted to manual. So I want to start on the vise today. It's either air or hydraulic powered, I'm not for sure. We'll see when we get out there and pull the original unit off. We need to convert it into something that we can put a hand crank on. So the vise is as good a place as any to start, I think. So let's go outside, get a look at it, and see if we can turn it into something useful. That's actually pretty pretty basic design, really. The, you know, this is notches in it, slides in a T-slotted groove. You know, this has a uh, hook that hooks in that, and anything that pushes on this, you know, closes the vice jaw. So it's a quick adjust for sure. Let me just lift that up, move it, and you know, so you don't need uh, much throw on a handle at all. So a small amount of cranking will close this vise at any position, which is a good design. I just need to make something that's manual instead of, you know, something that's air actuated, I guess, or hydraulic. So, really could use a bigger vise to hold this large stuff, but this should work. I've never had one of these apart, so I don't have any idea how they're, well, I have an idea, but uh, not a great idea on how they're made. And I'm assuming that this, it's got open and closed, a little tag here. I'm assuming that that's just a valve. You know, this had two lines running to it, uh, probably hydraulic. This is a, a hydraulic cylinder, short throw, couldn't be over a couple inches of throw. Um, and you, you know, push this closed, push a button, and it probably closes. That's just a guess. And then do that, and, you know, it's free to push back. So that's the idea. So let's take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside. I may be able to, to use these pieces in the construction of a manually operated the uh, handle. That's what I want. I mean. Huh. Yeah, that's all it is. Just a valve. Piston. I don't know if that's made on there or, or not. But yeah. It's probably got a spring in it. Just a little hydraulic cylinder. Yeah, that's it. Probably a cast piston. Here's the ring for the seal. And just uh, fluid pushes this into the rail on the vise and closes it. That's it. So it's basic. All we need something. All we need is something that pushes. And uh, we'll clean this thing out. I 
it. So I've got my parts somewhat cleaned up, and uh, you know I can now handle them without getting completely filthy. And I really think this is going to work. Um, and oddly enough, it may work pretty good. You, know, you wouldn't think of turning this into a manual unit, but I think everything's here to do it and do a good job on it to where it looks almost original. You know, like it hadn't been messed with. That's kind of a, you know, of a goal of mine. So there's the piston. I pulled the seal and stuff off of it. You know, we're not going to use the spring for now, just for demonstration. So it looks like it only has a you know, a couple inches of throw here. Let me get you a little closer on this. All right, so that should be all we need. I mean, that's all this thing had originally, you know, unless this is wore down some. Now, one thing that I don't want is when, you know, I turn the handle to screw in this vise, I don't want this piston spinning, you know, and this rubbing, because this just butts up against that cast iron bar. Uh, on the vise. I don't want this spinning and causing a bunch of friction. So that's where this thrust bearing comes in. So it'll need to seat, you know, somewhere back here. I'll maybe have to remachine this rod to accept this thrust bearing. So it'll sit in there. Probably reuse the spring to where it always maintains pressure on this unit, pushing it back against this, which will fit on there just like it did originally. This will be cut off. We'll have a thread rod in here, you know, that uh, mates up with the thrust bearing. And that really, I think, should be it. And it should function really good. Everything is, you know, in line. So the center of this um, housing here is the center of the outlet. So everything should work. That's amazing to me that everything lines up good enough to where this actually may work. So I got to get this off first. It's kind of stuck. It's not kind of stuck, it is stuck. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna cut it off with the saw and then get this valve body and see if I can't turn that into a threaded rod, threaded hole. Huh, that was a little bitty shaft running through there. Take it apart. Yeah, get out of there. Huh. Hmm, just a... It was the rotor with the two positioning holes and the path through the center, I guess. it really it's a sleeve of some sort some sort of bushing I guess maybe hmm. yeah that's it it's over so there we go that's basic yeah you see how all that lines right up that piston Perfect. So we're good to go, I think. So we need to put this in the four jaw and uh, drill, bore it and thread it. All right, so put just a piece of, this is just a piece of Thompson shaft. It's some pretty good stuff. Five eighths, it fits you know, really well inside the bore of this. So I'm gonna use that to true this bore up with the you know, axis of the axis of rotation on the lathe. So we'll find our high spot, which is there. I always work the high spot. We'll loosen the low jaw. And tighten the high. All right, so I've got the end piece, you know, dialed in. It should be good to go. And I need to bore this out to accept this thread. This piece of threaded rod is. What is it? Seven eighths nine. Why seven eighths nine within a sixty degree thread? Because it's what I have, and I've already exceeded my budget of zero dollars on this modification. 
Ideally, I'd want to use a piece of Acme thread or something like that. But for one, I don't have the Acme thread, and I'm not going to cut a piece of Acme thread because I don't have a tap to tap it either. It would be a long, drawn-out thing, and this will be plenty good enough. I mean, this is a massive, uh, massive bolt, and it can always be modified down the road. So we'll bore this out. We're going to bore it out 49 64 We're going to tap it, then we will modify the rest of the pieces, and hopefully they jive together, and they should. So let's bore this out, and then we'll start on the rest of it. All right, so this is cast iron, so it should bore pretty easy, really. So the reason why I'm boring this and not drilling it, I have a 4964 to drill, is because this already has holes in it. This hole from my indicating is not exactly true with this back face, the face of this piece that's set up against the chuck. This carbide bar will make its own hole through, and then you know I can be pretty confident that uh, you know it's true with the face that this is set up against, and these holes should not really affect this bar. So that's why we're boring it and not drilling it. So we're just going to use our little stare at uh, bore gauge, snap gauge, to see where we're at. You know, we're going to tap this hole, so it ain't got to be perfect, but we want to get a uh, good measurement, see where we're at. 49.64 is 756.6. So what is it, 700? So 56 thousands, basically, 57. as far as the hole and then we're just going to face this for reference none of this was really true with the back so not that it mattered it was just a valve body edges and then tap this thing.
There we go. I'll just uh, chamfer that uh, edge there. That'll be good to go. Alright, here's the piston, the pusher rod that originally worked in the cylinder and pushed the vise closed. The nut that held it all together. And uh, had an O-ring there to seal the shaft through so you didn't get fluid leakage between the two. Now, to modify this, what I'm going to do first is Loctite this nut on here really good. And I hope this will work. should. Oh, permanent Loctite. Screw it together, put the vise, tighten that up real well. Then, what I'm going to do is turn, once this is tightened down, I'm going to turn the top of this nut and the shaft here down to where it's flat, just to where this thrust bearing has something to set against, a good flat surface that's you know true with the shaft there. And then we'll adapt this thrust bearing to fit on the actual you know, rod to tighten the vise itself that we just you know, uh, threaded the hole for in the other piece. So let's tighten this up and turn this face and uh, face this off. Taking a break? Yeah. Why? Just wondering. It's so hot. Need to cut up some of that wood for firewood. clean that up a little bit and that should be good enough I think. Alright here's the screw of our vise. I cut it down to a manageable length. Now I need to turn down a little shoulder on the end here that'll slide up into the bore of this thrust bearing. Then I'll use some retaining compound to hold it on. I just want it a ledge large enough for it to slip up on and then like I said it'll be retained by the retaining compound and then that should be pretty much it other than the handle and assembly I hope so let's put our little ledge on there and see if it works <laughs>
go. I'll just knock this little ledge or shoulder off back there and put some retaining compound on that. And that's really that's all I wanted. Those of you who watched last week's video will probably remember this carbide parting blade I'm showing here. You know, I brazed the big chunk of carbide that's on the top and I'm sharpening it on the cutter grinder with the resin bonded diamond wheel. And I figured I'd share some of the footage with you. It actually turned out really nice and uh, you know, can't wait to use it. So now I'm set up to grind the very front or the front face of this tool right below the cutting edge. Just ground the top and I'm happy with the way it turned out. I've got about seven degrees in the top here, at least as far as I can tell, and off the scale. And better to be on the high side of clearance than on the low side. Better too much than too little, let's just say that. Lots of good you know, dust evacuation right up the source. Don't want to suck that stuff down your lungs. So let's grind the front of this, and then uh, we'll work on the sides here. So let me show you real quick how I'm going to set this up to get the original angles that are in this blade back in it. Now it's kind of hollow ground, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's been ground with a straight wheel or just a round wheel onto the side, so it's dipped in the center. But I want to match that original angle back into my sides of the carbide blank here that I've braised on. So in order to match that, I'm just going to take a parallel and set it across the the blade there, and then adjust my fixture while well, having this indicator on it until I read zero. So then I'll be grinding, you know, that same angle back in the sides of the blade. Now I also want this this cutting end to be the widest out here where all the cutting takes place and narrow as it goes back. That's pretty common, and it allows a free cutting tool that doesn't rub. So we'll put about a degree of relief, you know, in this side and in the other side. So it should narrow slightly as it goes back. So all that can be done you know, with this one fixture and one setup. So that's what I'm going to dial in here and then we'll we'll grind it. I think that should should work fine. All right, here's a tool that I use quite a bit on the grinder. I usually don't I don't show it much, but you know, if I'm setting rough angles for just like what I'm doing now, for grinding relief in this parting blade. The machine does not have to be level to use this. It's a combination level and angle finder that's adjustable. So I can just set it on the on the table in the direction that I want to read and I can zero it. With this little knob here. And then let's say I want to put a degree of angle tapering back into, into this blade. So now I can just take it and set it on the actual work itself. And there we go. You know, adjust my fixture till I get it reading on the on the scale here. So that's a nice little tool. You know, and uh, can be used for all kinds of stuff. So it's got a adjustable base. A little spirit level in there also. Vial. Probably a fairly pricey piece at one time. I'm not for sure. Made in Canada, but, uh, but yeah, it's good for. You know, situations like this. So there's the parting blade that I brazed the carbide to, sharpened it, put relief on it, both on the sides and on the front. 
but those should be good to go. All I'm doing right now is polishing up the top. I'm using some white gas, just uh, it's just Coleman lantern fluid, and uh, using that on this little diamond file and polishing up the top. You know, this is uh, a really good way to get a good sharp edge. You just want to make sure not to, to rock your uh, file at all. I'm just holding it right in the middle and uh, just back and forth a little bit. Just enough to to polish out my grinding marks. And it's looking pretty good. I've almost got all the marks out, which is not completely necessary, as long as I get them out at the cutting edge. But in order to test for a good sharp edge with carbide, I just use my fingernail. And if it pulls up, you know, pieces of fingernail really easy, I know I got a good sharp edge. Same way I test scraper blades, like uh, for scraping uh, cast iron. So. A good sharp edge there and that should be you know, good to go. It's the widest out here right on the cutting edge and then narrows towards the back so shouldn't rub or anything and uh, being as long as it is it should give quite a long service life. Just gets dull. You just run, run the front back. Alright so still haven't cleaned all this stuff up. It's Filthy. But let's do a quick test fit and see if what I'm doing here is going to work, and I believe that it will. Now this this body, the original cylinder body, is completely eaten up on the inside, so it wouldn't have worked at least well, you know, like it was originally. So there's our pusher. This is what's going to push on our little piece in the vise and and actually close it. And there's the spring. So put that in there. That in there. Now piece that we threaded, the piece of threaded rod that we turned down on the end for our thrust bearing, and then a little collar that I just made, just a threaded piece of steel. And I'm gonna, this little piece of steel here is simply to keep this threaded rod from being able to screw all the way out the back. I'm gonna lock tight it permanently and potentially may spring pin it you know, to the shaft. That way when this, when somebody loosens this vise, they won't pull this, you know, a retaining compound or this bearing off of the shaft. It's only held on by retaining compound. And, you know, if you didn't know and you crank this loose, you could you could just potentially pop it apart. And we don't want that. So I use a little Loctite here, a little red Loctite for now anyway. Just a tad. That should work. So now this cannot screw all the way out, at least not this way. You have to take it apart to, to get it to uh, get this shaft out. Now this is going to have to be cut to length. It'll have to be fitted to a handle, all that good stuff. But first, let's make sure what we're going to do, what we're doing here is going to actually work. So the thrust bearing will just rest on the top of this flat bolt. It will be preloaded a bit. That's okay. All right, let me grab some, let me grab a wrench and we'll tighten this up and then we'll test and see if it works. Here's our little pusher that's going to push on our piece of the vise. And it does work. Awesome. Uh, that actually went to bed went together much better than I than I thought it would. For just a you know design in your head real quick, just by looking at it, it's not too bad. Still maintain the complete original look, you know, the of the machine. You know, we'll just have to make some sort of nice handle here. To, to operate it with. I think that's pretty important. But for now, this looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's finish putting it together and uh, test fit it on the actual saw and see if it we can open and close the actual vise with it. All right, 
So I think this is going to look pretty good. It'll look original. I just need to make a handle for this. You know, I'm thinking maybe maybe a round one similar to this. Maybe I can uh, you know model this type of handle, or I can make you know a three three legged handle with uh, you know like like you'd see on a drill press. Uh, so something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But it's got to have a handle. All that needs sticking out here is just a couple inches of thread. That's all the travel that this thing has. So let's uh, see. Piece of four inch. Let's stick it out here. And the closest one. Right now I'm gonna. This got to be cut off, you know. So vice grips. Care if it damages the end of the thread here, just a just a trial. See if it works. It does. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that. So, kept the original look. This is going to be out enough to where I can, you know, get a nice handle on it with some leverage. And uh, it should work. It really doesn't. Don't need a huge handle here. That'd probably be plenty big enough. It doesn't take a whole lot to hold stuff. But, loosen, and then, you know, this thing's got a huge capacity. And quite a bit more than that, so. That's nice. I'm excited. I want to get this thing fixed, even though it's ten times the saw I really need. That's got to come off there. You know, it's still a nice unit. This has got a little hydraulic cylinder here, too, or an air cylinder. Uh, but it's already set up. This is the blade tensioning. It's already set up to work, uh, you know, manual also. So, you see that. So, a lot to do to this saw still. Next, going to be a handle, I think. All right, so a little backstory on this saw. Uh, for those who don't know, this saw was given to me by a friend of Brian Blocks. It was a completely automatic saw. This saw had a bar feeder and stuff on it. It was basically 100% automatic. You had a control panel up front, which has been removed. It was mounted here on the on the blade guide. Uh, units and uh, you could pretty much operate anything uh, from up here the amount the vise opened and closed the blade tension the blade speed everything could be operated from from up front but of course after you know probably 20 years of use it had tons of problems with the electronics and hydraulics and and whatnot and the control panel was broken off of it so time to either make this thing a manual saw or scrap it well i decided to to make it a manual saw hence the manual vice that i just done it still needs to have the speed controlled it was originally controlled by a little cylinder here hydraulic cylinder so my plan is to put a bell crank here just manually operated to where i can adjust the speed this is the speed of the blade uh, with just a little crank here that should be pretty basic i need to work on getting the, the lift cylinder or you know the descent cylinder uh, set one size properly or retrofit this one something i still haven't even considered what i need to do to to get that working yet and i need to work on the actual body of the saw it has some damage from uh, blades and stuff coming off of it over the years it is a three-phase motor so you know it should be pretty basic to to power i can use my big phase converter to to power it and uh, you know that's it it's going to be pretty straightforward i think i'm sure we'll run into several issues along the way but that's that's the deal you know i didn't want this thing to go to the scrap yard and uh you know so I decided to uh, to make it a manual saw. That's that's the story. All right. So here's just some of the stuff that come off of the saw. 
and I apologize it's starting to get dark on me but you can see just a ton of components here uh, it had an in feed table you know here's all the controls and they you know didn't have the top pretty much shot um, here's the electronics cabinet you know, just just full been full of water at some some point and no good the actual base that the saw set on the hydraulic control valve unit and the sliding vise that's going to be a that's a big piece of cast iron there big you know, two inches thick by you know three foot long so that's the components that come off of it it was quite a job just to get that stripped down to the point that it's at now but uh you know there it is so lots of lots of pieces have already been stripped off the saw i right, guess that's it for this week anyway it's been a fast week for me really flown by but i'm happy with the way that that vice modification turned out for a you know wasn't even a napkin sketch design really it was just a oh i think this will work i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out and it should be fine for its intended purpose so up to this point really other than that vice that's all that i've done to this saw to convert it to manual other than strip all the stuff off of it which was quite a big job in itself just getting it ready to to convert but really this saw otherwise was going to go to the scrap yard and I hate to see a saw like that go. Man, you talk about an industrial piece of equipment that would last a guy like me, you know, seven lifetimes. So I'm excited to see it, you know, resurrected and, uh, you know, put back into service. Now, there's a meet and greet coming up this week. It's Monday, July 29th, 2019. If you did not watch the video that I posted earlier this week, go back and watch that for the details. But it's going to be me... Uh, Adam Booth and Brian Block we're going to be meeting in Lexington, Kentucky at the Blue Stallion Brewing Company at about 7 p.m. for, you know, just to meet the viewers and hang out, really. So if you're interested or local, stop by, you know, meet one of us, all of us, you know, whatever you, <laughs> whichever you prefer, and, uh, you know, to have a chat. It should be fun, I think. Now, I should have my bash video coming out soon. I've got finally got everything pretty much edited together and ready to, to post. So look forward to that coming out. I've got a patron giveaway video that I've got filmed that I gotta post also. So that should be out for my patrons. You know, big thanks to my patrons. I really, really appreciate all the help and couldn't imagine trying to do this without, you know, at least some support because it gets uh, really time consuming, that's for sure. So, just a big thanks. That, that's it. You know, if anybody needs anything, you can send me an email. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that. By visiting the links in the description and this video and some of my past ones. You know, I appreciate all the help. We all, we all do, as you can imagine. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.